Joe at Red's Fly Shop here. Double nymph rigs are a big pain in the ass for a lot of anglers. I'm going to sort out several ways to set up your double nymph rigs with an emphasis on Euro nymphing, but a lot of these strategies can be applied to using an indicator and a couple of nymphs as well. I'll go through several setups, when to use them, when not to use them, and a couple of rigging hacks that will hopefully save you time and keep your fly in the water more frequently. The first rig we're going to talk about is like your all-time classic and traditional Euro nymphing system where I have uh, what we call an anchor fly, which is uh, usually a tungsten jig head with a large bead, uh, but a sleek fly, not like a big stonefly nymph. Um, with Euro nymphing, we're often trying to surgically pick apart the same piece of water until we find the exact presentation the fish needs. So smaller flies in a traditional rig often work better. But the way this one works, I'm going to kind of overlay my setup. There's a traditional or a triple surgeon's knot at this junction that you see right there. And I added a piece of line that can be the same diameter or it can be a little lighter diameter in an unweighted fly. The idea here is this anchor fly tied on a small loop knot is the preferred way to do it, hits the bottom and that anchor fly right here slows down. It makes contact with the bottom. With this rig, you need to be in contact with the bottom for it to be effective. And if the current's flowing that way, the resistance on this anchor fly here being on the bottom kicks this fly out in front. So my unweighted fly will hover, and ideally, if it were on this diagram, would hover along and jig right in front of the beautiful trout drawing that you see right there and go right in his mouth because they're sitting several inches off the bottom. Now, the downsides of this rig are if you're not really good with junction knots, it can be a pain in the neck to try to repair. But when you're setting it up and you're in a situation where you know you can keep this anchor fly on the bottom, meaning the currents aren't too boily, they're not too deep, they're not too swift, and you have the appropriate fly, you can get it down. This anchor fly really puts the brakes on nice. It hovers an unweighted fly, which can then move around. As you see, I'm kind of emulating some movement right there because it's fun and we can stay connected with the bottom. As far as tippet diameter goes, uh, 4X is about the heaviest. You can really run this setup and do really well. Often I'll run four to my anchor fly and five or six to my tag fly. If you're in really clear water, smaller flies, picky trout, and you need more connectivity, get down to five and six X for maximum control. The next couple of rigs we're gonna talk about are gonna be when this junction breaks. And most often the break you're gonna have is that tag fly that you see wandering around right there ends up breaking off. And that's when most anglers waste a lot of time. I'm gonna simulate what it's like when that breaks off and show you a couple of ways to repair that. So this is a great hack. I found myself in a situation where my tag fly broke off or I just changed flies so many times that my upper tag fly no longer had enough line available to it. Or maybe I just broke the fly off and it broke at that junction, which can often happen. So what I've done here is I've added a tag using a triple surgeon's loop and then I looped it onto itself around the main line. So I'll do this as gracefully as I can, but that's just kind of free floating on the line right there. And it, it tends to slide when fishing casting right down into that old triple surgeon's knot that I'm really not using anymore. But the cool thing about this is if your line ever gets spun up and your flies get spun around each other, this system actually will spin and spin and spin and won't get twisted up. It'll just continue to rotate around. So it works extremely well when you're using a weighted fly on your upper tag. It's a great hack. It's a great system. The other one that's a little bit more primitive that you could do is I could take and pre-tie uh, my, my upper, my replacement flyer, the fly that I'd like to add on just a line that's short like this, 10 or 12 inches works. And I could just take and do a clinch knot around my main line above the triple surgeon's knot and it would slide down into that just the same. If you're not comfortable with that triple surgeon's loop, you can just clinch knot this around there, pull it tight, slide it down to the junction, trim it off. It's a little bit more primitive but it works quite well and most people are very comfortable just tying a clinch knot around the main line, seven wraps, just pull it and you're back to fishing. So it can be a little bit weaker if the tippet sizes are the same diameter, but as long as your tag fly is one X smaller in diameter than your main line, just run it, see how it works for you. And if it's more efficient and gets you back in the water faster, I would encourage you to try that and see if it makes good, efficient use of your time. The other thing I really like about it is I can pre-tie a couple of these 
especially when I'm guiding, I can put them in my shirt or on my tackle bag and they're ready to go in the event I bust off that upper tag fly, which often happens because I like to run it on a little bit lighter tippet. This next rig is really cool if you get a lot of spins and tangles. I like this in the wind. I like it for beginners, but if you're not good at a non-slip mono loop knot, this one could be a little tougher. I love this rig when I'm setting up a fresh piece of leader, just one long piece of leader. What I have here is I have my whole leader and I've tied this on one X just so you can see it a little better. And I've got my small upper tag nymph tied on a non-slip mono loop. And then I have my anchor fly down here tied just to a, a little non-slip mono loop on the bottom. So what I did here when I was tying this is I took one long piece of line and I tied a non-slip mono loop to this upper fly, okay? And I left the tag that would normally be cut off of that non-slip mono loop, I left it like 16 inches long or so. And I left that fly on there and I tied this to what would be the dead end tag of that non-slip mono loop. And it works really, really well. If this fly has a little bit of weight to it, it will kick around a little bit on that loop. Doesn't drift ahead and really provide that nice fluttering buoyancy. But if I'm getting most of my fish here and I want a low stress tag fly that will not slow me down, won't snag on the bottom or any little sticks. I've got this guy up here in the column a little bit that kind of stays out of my way. So essentially I'm really focusing on this fly. I've got this guy here as a bonus and it doesn't get itself in trouble by spinning around my line, snagging or tangling in my cast, or even hitting a tree in my back cast. I only really have one fly that's flopping around. So let's take, uh, let's take one look at that. And again, I tied it on one X, so the loop looks a little bit messy. I would never normally use one X, but I think it shows up on the camera a little bit better. And then I've got another little non-slip mono loop to what would be my anchor fly there. Again, works really well when I'm having a whole piece of leader that's new. Non-slip mono loop to the upper fly, leave the tag long, tie on your anchor fly at the end. Really low stress setup for a two fly rig. All right, the next setup I can't take credit for because it is so genius simple. And so many people since I put out an Instagram video have commented like, why didn't I think of that? And basically what I've done here is I've got one piece of line. This works really great on a fresh setup. And I've taken my heavier fly and I tied a clinch knot to that. And don't worry about improving it. You can if you want, just pull it. Don't stress out about your knots, quit freaking out. And I left the tag for my clinch knot long enough, the piece I would normally cut off and then start another knot. I just left it long enough to run out to what would be my smaller fly. And the fishability is gonna be something like this. My anchor fly or my heavy fly is probably gonna make contact with the bottom. It's gonna get downstream first in this situation. And chances are my other fly is gonna follow along behind it like this. But essentially with the effort of two clinch knots, I've made a multi-fly rig and I have one piece of contiguous line all the way through like that right there. So pretty simple, doesn't tangle much, not like the split yoke that we talked about first. You are gonna lose some strike sensitivity when fish grab this fly. You may not get that, that instantaneous feedback, but if it gets you fishing more, keeps you untangled, and you have faster rebuilds or faster setups, I think for a lot of you, it's gonna be an esteemed advantage. The next thing we'll talk about is what to do when you break off this back one. When you break off the front one, you have all sorts of options. You're gonna to have to problem solve that yourself but there's a couple of quick patches that we can do in the event we break this guy off back here. All right, so I broke off the, the tag or the trailer in that system that I had that I showed you last. And now I'm just going old school, just basic inline trailer, okay? Don't overthink this sometimes, guys. I just tied my trailer to the gape of the hook on what would be my anchor fly, and it runs back, and I just tied a clinch knot right there and a clinch knot right there. I think if you're watching this video, you know how to do a clinch knot, you're probably pretty good at it. So my, my main leader comes down, you can run this under an indicator, you can run it Euro style, and then that will come up. And chances are your big fly, when you're leading it because it's in line, will come downstream first. This guy will trail along behind, or it might be just outside in a slightly different feeding lane. So you can run these fairly long. You can get out to about 20 inches if you want. I like this setup in the wind 
I've begun to really like it for beginners when I'm teaching fish along courses here at the Reds University. You lose some sensitivity again on the strike for your smaller fly. But again, if it keeps you untangled, it keeps you retying quick, it keeps you in the water. Uh, I think it's a really, really good system. On a big Western stream like this, it's probably gonna be less critical which of those rigs you have. If you're on a small stream with really captive fish, the original setup with a split junction where we hover the lighter fly up off the bottom a little bit is quite deadly. So I want you to kind of work towards that, but don't be afraid to just patch things up and get yourself back in the water and just absolutely keep things simple. The option you have here after this, let's just say this was to break off, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna go back to one of the original rigs we had where we had maybe an anchor fly or a stonefly nymph. You then have the option of replacing this line. It started out as all one diameter. Now you have the option of retying maybe 5X, 6X, or something that's lighter than say your 4X or your 5X. I generally like to graduate down so that when my back fly here snags up and breaks off, I'm not as at greater risk of breaking off the entire setup. So there are no like hard, fast rules with how you have to set this stuff up. Find something that you can rebuild quickly. You understand how it works. It's clean and consistent. And by all means, just get out there fishing and get yourself in the water. The final option, okay, is gonna be just fishing one fly. And I don't see enough beginners do that. As I've taught more and more clinics, I really have worked towards getting people to start with one single anchor fly or one heavy fly just to get some reps in. Work on your casting, work on your hook setting. Even if it's the bottom, work on your hook setting. Get good at that process so that when you get two flies on there, you can make the most of your time out there on the water. But I think some of these hacks are really gonna help a lot of people that are trying to be more agile, efficient on the water and keep more, more time with that fly in the water fishing and less time fumbling around, tangling, and retying.